Or God, Madam Speaker. Um, Madam Speaker, it's always a pleasure to rise in this House on behalf of the constituents of Calgary Mindapore and in my role as Shadow Minister for the Treasury Board for His uh, Majesty's loyal opposition. Um, before I begin, Madam Speaker, I would just like to send uh, a special wish to my husband James, who is currently in the hospital awaiting surgery. Um, dear, I'm, I'm not sure if you're watching this, but I'm certainly thinking of you and look forward to seeing you at the end of this weekend as well to uh, my son Edward and to thank uh, my mother and my sister uh, and my niece as well for taking such good care of our son at this at this time for us so thank you very much um, Madam Speaker, Bill C-290 uh, is a private member's bill that came forward again uh, this year. This bill amends the Public Servants Disclosure Protection Act to strengthen the current whistleblower protections for public servants. It expands the definition of the term wrongdoing. It broadens what is considered a supervisor so that public servants can make a protected disclosure to any superior within their organization. It removes the requirement that a protective disclosure must be in good faith. It ensures that a whistleblower will be protected as long as they reasonably believe what they are disclosing is true. It expands the Auditor General's mandate to receive disclosures of wrongdoings from within the Office of the Public Sector Integrity Commissioner. It removes the requirement that investigations by the Office of the Public Sector Integrity Commissioner um, cannot overlap with investigations under other laws. It extends protections to former public servants and government contractors and all those involved in a disclosure. It gives supervisors a duty to protect and provide support to public servants who are involved in a disclosure. It allows for a remedy to be provided to a whistleblower if a reprisal is taken. It extends the deadline to file a reprisal complaint from 60 days to one year. It expands the annual report requirements, including the number of disclosures made by wrongdoing, the duration of all open cases and cases closed during the fiscal year, the distribution of cases by region, and the distribution of cases by federal departments and agencies. It increases the fines for reprisals against a whistleblower from $10,000 to $200,000 for indictable offenses and $5,000 to $100,000 for summary convictions. And it requires the Act to be reviewed by Parliament every five years. Uh, this legislation, Madam Speaker, was actually introduced under Prime Minister Harper uh, in response to the Liberal sponsorship scandal. And ironically, this is where we find ourselves here again after eight years of this Liberal NDP coalition is a significant number um, of scandals. The most recent with a whistleblower uh, alleging the Ministry of Industry's office softened the STDC report uh, in, in a cover-up. Um, so, Another example, Madam Speaker, where this government in fact made an attempt to cover up a whistleblower rather than support a whistleblower, uh, as Prime Minister Harper so bravely did um, in his first piece of legislation. In 2017, the Standing Committee of Government Operations and Estimates conducted a review of the Public Servants Disclosure Protection Act and published a report, and many of the recommendations made in the report are included uh, within this bill, and that is no doubt a positive thing. The question is, why did it take a private member's bill? Why did the government not take the onus upon themselves to adjust this legislation prior to a private member bringing this private member's bill forward? It's a valuable question. And in fact, when this legislation was finally brought forward, I can tell you in government operations, committee. We spent hours and hours going through this bill. And the major point uh, of this time that in us going through this bill was an attempt for the current Liberal NDP coalition to water down this bill, to further uh, provide no protection to whistleblowers, as is evidenced in the example that I just gave of the, of the industry minister. So very disappointing and, and not surprising. Um, you know, it was expected that the government would implement the recommendations in the 2017 uh, report, but did not make it a priority to do so. What they 
did do, I can certainly tell you, is they did what they're really good at. They created uh, a task force, someone to review this legislation, someone to consult with. I, uh, this is just a, a forte of this government that they, they take upon these consultations, they gather groups together to review things, and with no result. It was actually the one-year anniversary on December 7th of the government introducing this, this uh, task force that was supposed to review whistleblower legislation, and one year later, there is nothing to show for it. I, I was in the lobby right outside these chambers where the then Treasury Board Minister, uh, President of the Treasury Board, started this process, and a year later, there is just simply nothing uh, to show for it. I'm very proud of the history that the uh, official opposition has of protecting whistleblowers in the, the public service. In addition to the legislation that was brought forward by the Harper government, we also included with our 2019 and 2021 uh, election platforms the promise to continue this legislation and to provide more stringent protection for whistleblowers. And our party has been consistent in supporting increased whistleblower protections as the policy, issue, policy issues um, arise. Um, but as I said, uh, this government has a history of scandal. They have a history of cover-up. They have a history of inaction after creating task force, consultations. They, they want to just kick things down the line, push things down the line, avoid responsibility. And it's unfortunate, but we actually see this beyond this whistleblowing legislation, this C-290 bill that's in front of us today. They did it today with uh, the, 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 the private member's bill that was in front of us on child pornography on protecting, protecting our children, protecting the next generation. They, they turned their backs. They, they did not support this legislation as well. So this, this is absolutely in line with this government to, to turn their backs, to kick things uh, down the line. And it, it would just be absolutely impossible for me to stand up here and not mention this as well in the most evident display of this um, in, in the greatest conflict in the world right now in, in turning their backs on a long-standing uh, defender of democracy, of um, not standing to, uh, to bring a, a peaceful end of this conflict through the destruction of Hamas. They're willing to turn their backs not only on an entire nation, but essentially the entire world order the entire world order. And the things that will come to pass uh, in, in, in the Middle East are only, once again, a delay of the things that will soon arrive, um, that are arriving uh, in, uh, in other places within the, uh, the world. And, but we see this um, with, with this current government, that they are doing this with world conflict, with the child pornography uh, PMB that was in front of us today, and also with Bill C-290 legislation. Uh, this government now has the opportunity to do uh, the responsible thing and not only get this legislation through the House, but to go one step further and to complete the findings of that task force. Uh, I hope the President of the Treasury Board will deliver. She hasn't delivered on finding that um, puny $15 billion, hardly a drop in the bucket relative to our current deficit and our debt. I don't hold a lot of hope, frankly, that she will come through for th th whistleblowers. And it's unfortunate she wasn't there for the testimony throughout Government Operations Committee, which was heartbreaking, uh, which was uh, har uh, just absolutely um, terrible to see the things that our public servants have, have uh, been going through. But our party uh, was the party of supporting whistleblowers at that time. We continue to be the party of workers all across Canada, standing up for them in both the public and private realms. I truly hope it is within the heart of this government at this special time of year, at Christmas time, at Hanukkah, at Kwanzaa, they will find it within them to find the responsibility to handle better the crises of the world, our future generation, and the concerns of whistleblowers. Madam Speaker, thank you very much. Merci beaucoup.